Hello, tonight I'm going to be checking out the latest AIO from Lian Li. This is the Hydroshift 2 LCDS. I've got the TL version that's available in black and white for 240 US dollars. There's a version that comes with the slightly cheaper CL fans for 180 US dollars. And if you want to get it with no fans at all, it's 160 US dollars. So the S in the name is for square and it describes the shape of our pump. The previous version of the Hydroshift 2 had a C in the name and it was a circular shape. So the pump has a 3.4 inch screen on it with a 60 Hz refresh rate and it can reach brightness on up to 500 nits. And one nice feature of this pump is the screen is removable. So it's simply held on with magnets, you can pull it off and that's really going to simplify the installation process. If you take a look in at the back, you can see we've got pogo pins and gold contacts, so it is only going to go on the one-way round. So being a Hydroshift AIO, there's only going to be a small amount of our tubes on display in the main body of the case, and all our cables running to the pump run in the braided hoses, so you're going to get a really clean look. We've got all our tubes managed at the back where you're not going to see them, and it's only going to be the small amount of tubes then that's going to be on display in the main body of the case. And the idea is you're going to want to have these coming out directly above your CPU so they run nice and straight. So depending on the case you use, there may be a bit of variation on where your cooler is going to line up with your CPU. So you are able to adjust this on the radiator. You can see we've got this little bracket here holding the clips in place. And if I just slide the tubes to the side, you'll see we've got two screws holding this bracket in place. But we've got a whole lot of screw holes allowing you to move these tubes either way on the radiator. So all you need to do is remove one screw and loosen the second screw. And then we're going to be able to slide this bracket along. And all we'd need to do is just re-secure it down. And we've got a whole lot of screw holes that we can use to do that. So as well as being able to adjust the position of these tubes side to side, you are also able to adjust the amount of tube that's on display in the main body of the case. So you can see at the moment our tubes are sitting quite nicely. But if you actually had less space between your pump and your radiator at the top, you can actually have the tubes bent further forward, but you mightn't like the look of this, and it does look a little bit untidy. So one way to deal with this is to pull more of the tubes behind the radiator. So we can just pull them down through this bracket here. You're going to get just the right length, so there's not a big bend on these tubes, and you can just leave the excess tubes at the top of the case. If space at the top is really tight, you can remove this bracket altogether. So we just need to remove the two screws, and then we can free up our tubes. And that's just going to help you hide more of the tubes at the top. You can get things all the way down and twisted around when there's very limited space, and just leave all your excess tubes freely at the back. And if you do decide to leave the bracket in place, you'll notice it's additional screw holes and they'll line up with the 140 millimeter fan mounting slots. So your 120s will go into here and you can put additional fan screws into here which are going to help hold the bracket in place on the case. And we've got further 140 millimeter screw holes in these other two tube clips. So taking a look at our cables, you can see coming from our uni fans, we've got our wireless receiver and coming from it, we've got a cable with two four pin PWM connectors. Now these four pin PWM connectors are going to power our wireless receiver and to power our three fans on the radiator. And you have two different options for connecting them up. So you can simply plug these into your motherboard fan headers. Um, one of the fan cables may be enough power for the three fans, but it may not. Um, so Lian Lee do recommend plugging both these in. So an advantage of doing this is you're going to be able to use your motherboard fan curves from the BIOS to control the fans. Um, you will be able to do it with Lee and Lee's L-Connect, but if you don't use software, you will need to plug at least one of these into the CPU fan header. An alternative option is to use the uh, 3PWM to SATA connector. The SATA connector simply goes into a cable coming from your power supply, and you can simply then just plug one of the PWM cables into this connector, and the one cable will provide enough power through the SATA cable. So in terms of how things are going to connect up to your motherboard, we have got our wireless controller here, and it has a USB type A port on the end, and that's simply going to plug into a port in the back of your motherboard, and it's then going to allow you to adjust your fan speeds and the lighting effects on your fans using the on these L Connect. So coming from the other end of the aisle, we've got another PWM cable again. It's got two PWM connectors, and this is going to power our pump. So you can either plug these into your motherboard. If you do plug them into your motherboard, Lee and Lee recommend setting the fan curves to 100% in DC mode to make sure they get enough power. Or you can use two ports in the PWM to set a power connector to power them. The other connector at this side is a USB cable, 
and this USB cable is going to allow your pump to communicate with Lian Li's L Connect. So plugging this cable in is optional, but if you do, it will give you access to more effects on Lian Li's L Connect, as you can see from the table on the screen at the moment. So given that you are going to have to use L Connect to control the lighting effects on the fan, it just makes sense to plug this in if you've got the version of the IO that comes with the uni fans installed on it. If you don't want to use the USB cable, you can remove it. First thing is to remove this plastic cable cover. And then we just need to just trace our USB cable. So it's this one here. And then we can simply pull it out. So after installing your CPU, you're going to remove these stock clips. So each held on with two screws. And you're going to, going to grab the box labeled AMD socket and you're going to take the brackets from them and set them into place. Now, a very important step is you're going to want to check you've got the brackets round the right way. There's a little arrow on both pointing towards the CPU, but there is also a top and bottom bracket. So if you look here, the CPU text is the correct way up. If you install the other way around, even though the arrows will be pointing towards the CPU, the CPU text will be upside down. And then you're going to use the four screws that came in the box to secure the brackets to the motherboard. If you're going to be installing an Intel motherboard, the first thing you're going to want to do is install your backplate. And there is only one backplate included with a cooler, and it's compatible with LGI 1700 and 1851 sockets. So if you've got an older motherboard, you're not going to be able to install this cooler on it. We've got some double-sided adhesive, which you need to remove. This is a temporary build for me, so I'm just going to leave it in place. And then just line the backplate up with the holes in the motherboard. And then the double-sided adhesive is going to stick this to the back. Then we've got one bracket to go at the top and at the bottom. I'm going to put a screw into each corner. Importantly, you're going to want to put these screws with the screw hole at the top. And then you're going to want to use the screwdriver that comes with the I.O. to put these screws into place. So I'm going to set my top radiator bracket onto the I.O. And space is quite tight at the top in this case, so I'm going to have to install it all the way towards this side of the bracket. You'll notice we've got screw holes in the brackets holding our tubes in place and they line up with a 140mm mounting hole so we'll put additional screws into these. So in the Landfield 217 space is a little bit tight at the top and I can of course install the tubes in this position but there will be quite a big bend on the bracket. So what I'm going to do is simply put a little bit of the tubes through to the back. So you can see in this position with the tubes managed at the back I should hopefully have less of a bend when I install this. I'm going to remember to remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. So we can add some thermal paste to our CPU and for this installation it is important that you spread the thermal paste. So just before I set our top fan stroke radiator bracket, I'm just going to pass all the fan cables through to the back. So at the top of the case we've got our CPU fan and CPU opt header. So I'm going to bring the two PWM cables coming from our wireless receiver through and get them plugged into here. Then down the bottom of the case we've got our pump and also a system fan header. So I'm just going to bring our two PWM cables from the other side of the radiator through and we'll get them plugged into those headers. Next to those we've got our USB headers. I'm just going to bring the USB cable through and we'll get it plugged in. Now all the cables are plugged in, I can set our fan stroke radiator bracket into place at the top. So you'll notice here we have little notches at the slide where we're going to be able to slide our CPU cooler in and not having our bracket fully secured at the top is just giving me that little bit of extra freedom. So I'm simply going to push the CPU cooler into place and then if I slide it to the left hand side it's going to catch onto those notches in the bracket. I'm then going to get a thumb screw onto each corner. So unfortunately in this pre-production sample the thumb screws don't fit through the bracket. Lee and Lee are aware of the issues and they are we're sending out replacement thumb screws. New thumb screws will be included with the retail version of the cooler. To allow me to finish the guide I'm going to use the bracket that came with the circular version of the Hydra Shift 2. They do fit through without any problem. The only issue is they are white. But if you get the retail version, it will come with black brackets and black thumb screws that do fit. We do get tube clips you can use to help organise the cables running up to the top. But actually, I think they look nice and tidy as they are without this. So all we need to do now is replace our screen. And we can remove the plastic protection. And we just need to plug our wireless controller into a port on our motherboard. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download Lian Lee's L Connect. You'll find a link to this in the description. And then head over to your downloads folder, click on the file, click yes. And we'll click next, install. And then we can click on close. And then we can go ahead and open L Connect 3. Click yes. So on the first screen you can see we've got all our system information being displayed. I'm going to click on settings and then on device and I'm going to click on our wireless sync. Click on OK and set up wireless devices. 
First thing I'm going to have to do is bind the devices to our wireless controller. So I'm going to click on the link and then we can click on lock bound devices and click on OK. So the first thing I want to show you is to set up our fan and pump profile. So we'll click on it and you can see we've got our two devices. We've got our hydro shift, which is our pump. And we've also got our fans on the radiator. If we want to sync things up with motherboard, we can click on the button here at the top and that's going to sync everything up with motherboard control. I'd rather use Leanne Lee's L Connect, so that's what I'm going to use. So the first thing to set up our pump profile. So we can see at the moment it's running in PWM off our CPU temperature and that's our profile here. It ranges from 1600 at a minimum up to 3200 depending on what the temperature is. So I'm just going to leave that at default and it's running off our CPU temperature. Taking a look at our fans on the radiator. So again, these fans are running on our standard fan profile. We can see the current speed here and they're reacting to CPU temperature, which is just as we want them to do. We can enable start stop and you'll notice that will take the fan curve all the way down to zero. I don't want to do that. I'd rather leave it running at a little bit of speed so we can leave that on. And if you only adjust the profiles, if you want to, for example, go to a quiet profile, you can do that and that's going to slightly change the fan curve. You also have the option to make your own custom curves. But for now, I'm just going to leave things on the standard fan profile. OK, to control our lighting, we're going to click on the L wireless utility. Click on OK. And then we just need to choose the device we're going to set up first of all. So first of all, I'm going to set up the fans on the radiator. At the moment, you can see they're currently set to rainbow. Like previously on Lili Uni fans, you've got the option to control the lighting effects in all the fans, or you can control the lighting at the top and the bottom separately. I'm just going to control it all. And I'm looking for a static white. So I'm going to go to static color and I just need to paint the color white into here. And I'm just going to apply this to all the fans. So click on apply to all and you'll notice our fans at the top have now changed to white. OK, next thing to do is set up our screen. So we'll click on it and we've got a few different options. The first thing is the lining around the screen. So I'm going to click on it and it again is currently set to rainbow. We've only got the one option here. And again, to get a static white, click static, click on the color and just paint it in as white and then I'll click on apply. And you'll notice now that the lining around the pump has changed to a solid white. So to set up the screen, we just need to click on the middle and you'll notice we've got a whole variety of different um, effects. And I'll play a few of these for you. And we can set up what is actually displayed on the screen. So we'll click on sensor setup. And you can see at the moment it's cycling through CPU temp, GPU temp, CPU load, GPU load and water temperature for two seconds each. And we can change our text color if we want to. So I'm happy enough with that. I'll leave that as default and I'll show you the rest of these. OK, so we've also got the screen advanced mode, so I can turn that on. And you'll see here that we now have much more complex effects. Let's try a few of these out.
And again, you've also got the options to make your own custom theme where you're able to upload your images and videos and then you can make modular components on top of that image and video. And the also additional thing you can do is have this as a secondary screen as well. Thank you.